Um, welcome to this tutorial on ANOVA or Analysis of Variance. What we're going to be doing is that I'm going to start with some uh, very basic concepts of uh, when to use ANOVA and some of the assumptions behind it and then I'm just going to take you step by step on how to conduct it uh, in SPSS with a data set. And the first thing is that we we do uh, we run ANOVA analysis when we want to compare mean differences between three or more groups. Um, if you have two means only, for example, only two groups, uh, you could just uh, do a t-test. Um, and even though potentially we could do several t-tests uh, between three or more groups, the reason why we don't do that in research is because that would raise the what is called the family-wise error. And that is the, the probability of uh, committing a type 1 error. And remember, type 1 error is uh, rejecting the null hypothesis that it says that there's no experimental effect when in reality we should not reject it. So in other words, we're claiming that our experimental manipulation has been effective when it hasn't. So an ANOVA produces an F statistic or F ratio, which is similar to the T statistic in that it compares the amount of systematic variance in the data to the amount of unsystematic variance. If the F value is greater than 1, it indicates that the experimental manipulation had some effect before the effect due to individual differences, for example. However, it doesn't quite tell us whether the F ratio is large enough not to be the result of pure chance. For that, we would need to check uh, our P values. The other uh, aspect that we need to bear in mind is that ANOVA is an omnibus test which means that it tests for an overall experimental effect. Although ANOVA tells us whether the experimental manipulation was generally successful, it does not provide specific information about which groups were uh, affected or had a particular effect on our dependent variable. And um, as for all parametric tests based on the normal distribution, for the F statistic to be reliable, we need to fulfill certain criteria, such as the variances in each experimental condition need to be fairly similar, uh, the data should be independent, and um, we get that by ensuring that we have collected random uh, samples as well, that the dependent variable should be measured on at least an interval scale, usually we deal with um, continuous variables and the distributions uh, should be normally distributed but uh, this applies within groups so each group uh, should be normally distributed in terms of uh, violations to the assumption of a homogeneity of variance NOVA is fairly robust uh, in terms of uh, the error rate when sample sizes are equal. However, when sample sizes are unequal, ANOVA is not robust to violations of homogeneity of variance. This is why, if at all possible, it is ideal to have equal sized uh, samples of data across conditions. The other aspect is that in order not to inflate the family-wise error by condu conducting several t-tests, we do post hoc tests when we don't have any specific hypothesis. On occasions, we may specify or plan specific comparisons, but it, as it is the case when we want to compare different interventions uh, against a control group, for example. So in our example, an experiment was carried out to examine the effects of a number of different treatments on depression. And there were four conditions. So basically, the whole sample was allocated to uh, three different groups. Um, drug treatment, psychotherapy, or biofeedback. And there's a, uh, another group which uh, is not receiving any treatment at all, um, and that's what we are going to call the control. So in this case, um, the variable that we are manipulating, the independent variable, is treatment type, so whether it is drug, psychotherapy, or biofeedback, and we want to see if that a allocation or that delivery of treatment has any a differential effect on levels of depression. 
So if you go to your Blackboard um, and uh, go to your respective uh, module and learning materials and go into the um, SPSS Labs inside the folder labeled ANOVA we will find a one-way ANOVA and we're gonna work with this file that is a labeled depression treatment so if you just download that file you'll be able to follow the exercise uh, along with the video so once you open your SPSS and select the respective file the first thing that we do is just to take a look at how the data set is uh, organized so what we have here is a uh, two variables we have a treatment variable and we have a depression variable and the treatment as we uh, mentioned it's a uh, consists of three different treatments so we have drugs psychotherapy biofeedback and control so this is our control group and let's just make a note that it is the last of all of the the groups uh, in this variable and the other variable that we have is a depression. So if you pay attention here, we have each individual represented by the rows, which means that different people belong to different groups. So this is a between groups a experimental design. And with most analysis, the first thing that we are going to do is just inspect our data graphically. So for that, and what we're going to do is go to graphs um, and then we are going to go to legacy plot and error bar. So error bar is a good option um, for the, the purpose at hand. Um, we leave it as simple as it is and summarize for uh, groups of cases. That is a uh, fine. Um, and we defined it. Okay, so we have our two uh, variables there on the left hand side, and on that in the field that it's um, labeled variable, we're going to put our dependent variables. And in this case, we are interested in the level of depression. So we're going to put that variable in that field. And for the other field that is labeled category access, we're going to put the variable that contains our different groups. Right, that is all a um, level of a uh, confidence 95%, uh, that's fine. So we just press OK to continue. Okay, so here we have our plot. And on the X axis, we have a depression treatment. So we have the different groups, drug psychotherapy, biofeedback, and a control. And on the Y axis, the uh, levels of depression. So the first thing that uh, uh, strikes or stands out is the fact that those ones who did not uh, receive any type of treatment have higher levels of depression. And we can see that uh, here on the, on the graph, the standard deviation and the mean of uh, people in this group do not quite overlap with uh, those ones who uh, pertain to any of the treatment groups. Um, uh, in contrast, if we compare all of the individuals that took part in any type of treatment, the standard uh, deviations or the, the error bars in this case they tend to sort of overlap with one another so we we, we have a reason to 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 expect that there won't be a uh, many significant differences um between treatment groups uh, as it corresponds to depression level but um in order to be sure then we conduct now a statistical analysis so for that we're gonna go to analyze the options on the top and once in analyze we are going to compare means so we are comparing means between treatments in this case and of the options there we are going to be conducting a one-way ANOVA 
and that brings up this uh, window so we have on the box on the left hand side we have our, our two variables and the test is asking for a dependent list so in other words that's our dependent variable which is the depression score and the so we're gonna put that one in there and for the uh, field below labeled factor we are gonna put a uh, our uh, factor variable in other words which is a uh, the the variable that is divided or split into different treatments now the options that we have on the right hand side one of those is post hoc now what we have here is a um, equal variances assume and below equal variances not assume. Now there are several multiple comparison procedures that have been specially designed for situations in which population variances differ. One of them is the uh, Donut C, which keep very tight type one error control. Um, which you use a two keys test and a break WQ and check the findings with a games Howell procedure. Um, we, we may check specific hypotheses that uh, all of the treatment groups uh, may differ with respect to uh, people who did not receive any treatment at all. Um, so we could use the Donuts test to examine those hypotheses uh, as well. Okay, so we are gonna then check the Toki and Donut respectively. Uh, so here I'm gonna check the Donut C and the Games Howell. So those ones would be in the case that the uh, equal variances uh, assumption is not uh, met. And the one above, the done it uh, control category, we have a drop menu. So remember that when we were looking at the, the way the data set was um, laid out, our control group was the last one. So in this case, if the default is first, we want to change that to a uh, last and basically we can decide to test a, which is a two-sided hypothesis, so no particular prediction. We, or we could then specify that the dependent variable, the values in the dependent variable, the depression score in this case, is gonna be higher for the control group, which kind of makes sense. So we could, um, take that one if we want it. For the time being, we're just gonna leave it two-sided, but based on the uh, graph that we did at the beginning, it kind of, it, we, we have reason to, to do that. Um, there would be that theoretical reason and uh, partly supported by the uh, preliminary visual inspection of the data. So presumably people could just like go straight and test that uh, one-sided hypothesis that all treatments, that, that control would be higher in, in terms of the depression values with respect to all the other conditions. Uh, like I said, we're just going to leave it two-sided and, and for the time being. So um, with all that, um, we press continue. And options, in options, we're gonna ask for descriptive statistics. Um, yes, we are interested in a test for homogeneity of variance, and we are gonna select brown uh, foresight and watch which are in case of violation of the homogeneity of variance. Means plot, we don't need it because um, the 
plot that we did at the beginning is kind of a, a better version of this plot and all we would uh, be learning from this is what we already learned by um, doing the plot at the beginning. And missing values, so we want to exclude missing values based on case analysis by analysis. If we were to select the second option, that means that if there's any missing data um, in any of the groups, uh, then we would exclude that participant altogether. For the data set that we have, it doesn't quite make any difference, so we're just going to leave it um, as it is. So we click on continue and we OK. Now the first box that we get with our output is a the descriptive statistics and we get those for each of the groups or each of the, the independent variables, the experimental manipulation. So we have the end for each of those which is that we can see 20 participants for each group and the total sample adding up to 80 participants. We have the mean and standard deviation for each of those groups, which is also information that we'll have to uh, report. Now the second uh, box in our SPSS output is the test for of homogeneity of variances. And in there we have something that is called the living statistic uh, based on mean, which is what we're interested in. And what this test is uh, checking is for the uh, violation of one of the assumptions of the ANOVA, that is, it's testing whether there are significant differences in the variances between our groups. Um, and as we can see here, because our significant or p-value is um, not significant because it is greater than 0 0.05, that means that we have not violated that assumption. And that means that we are um, good to go and interpret our ANOVA uh, output. If the Levine's test had been significant and therefore we had violated the homogeneity of variance, uh, one of the assumptions, that would mean that we would have to then interpret the robust test instead. So in other words, we would take the value, uh, the Welch value or the Brown Forsyth Now, the, uh, the first thing to, to notice with the ANOVA um, output is that it is divided between, between groups and within groups. And between groups, it's um, the effects due to the model, that is the experimental effect uh, represented here by the, the sum of squares. And the within groups is um, the unsystematic variation in the data uh, due to, say, the individual differences. Now, the next um, value that we have is the degrees of freedom um, based on the between groups and the based on the total. And of interest is uh, our F statistic value, which in this case is significant. So we can conclude that uh, in fact there are differences between our groups, but as pointed out uh, initially, we do not know where those differences lie. And for that, we need to uh, check the post hoc tests. And the last table of uh, interest is the post hoc test or uh, multiple comparisons. So that table basically is divided between the 2K test, uh, Games Howell or Dunet uh, that we specified when uh, computing or uh, specifying the, the ANOVA analysis. And since we um, had a non-significant living test, that means that we didn't violate uh, the assumption of homogeneity, that means that we can uh, actually uh, interpret the data reported in this box. And what we have here is a, a comparison across all of the different groups. So for example, if we uh, compare drugs to psychotherapy, the question is, is there a significant difference in the mean um, depression scores between those ones who took and then received drugs and those ones who received psychotherapy? And what we have here is that 
and there is a, a significant uh, difference in the means uh, between those two groups. But comparing those ones who received the drugs and biofeedback, we do not have a significant difference. And so on and so forth with all the other uh, comparisons um, and all the other groups. We can see here that all of those individuals that received any type of treatment, that is a drug psychotherapy or biofeedback, had significant mean differences in the depression scores compared to a uh, control. And we see that, we confirm that by the significant uh, values here on the column uh, specified by SIG. If um, Levine's test had been significant and we had violated the assumption of homogeneity, then we would be interpreting the data reported in Games Howell or Donet AC test. Um, lastly, remember that we uh, also specified the Donet test uh, for um, having as a point of comparison our control group. And um, just as before, what we could confirm here is that with respect to control, um, there were there was a significant uh, mean difference um, in the scores of depression with respect to people who took a drug-based treatment, psychotherapy, or biofeedback. And so all that remains then is to report the results based on an APA style. So this is the way we would uh, normally do it. Um, First, I start by describing the experimental design. In our case, it was a one way between subjects uh, and over. Describe your variables. In this case, the independent variable had four levels and how we measured uh, our depression or our dependent variable. Also, we would say specify that we did not violate the assumption of a homogeneity of variance by Levine's test and report the respected uh, values. In the next paragraph, then, we will go into the actual ANOVA or F statistic. So we have the uh, ANOVA output um, that we got from SPSS. And we would fill in or report that information. So first, we'd report the uh, degrees of freedom, then the F uh, statistic, and whether it was significant or not. So in this case, we can then conclude that um, all treatments were significantly um, different than people who did not receive any treatment at all. And then we would also um, describe the post hoc tests and whether there were any significant differences uh, between those. In this case, there were no significant differences between those uh, groups with respect to the control group. So. Um, if there were any other uh, differences that were of interest, then you would report the respective values there. And that concludes this uh, tutorial.